Hey, it's Dave Wyman. Welcome to Football 101. Today's theme is going to be KJ for Pro Bowl. If you, if you get out there and vote for him, you, you got to do it because he is having a great year. So to talk about a play that he made. But first, let's get to, uh, to some coverages. We've talked in the past about cover four, three, two, and those are all zone drops. I use the term droppers, guys, that they drop back into a zone and they cover more of an area. Cover one is what we're going to look at today, and that's really man-to-man -man coverage. And so, and the reason why they call, call it one is because you got one guy back here, and that's uh, the free safety, Earl Thomas, now Stephen Terrell, unfortunately. But he will be back here, and it's not like he's covering his zone, but he's back here in case anything sort of leaks through. He's sort of the last line of defense. But it's man-to-man -man coverage, so everybody's basically just taking a guy and covering him everywhere. And so. Cam Chancellor is, is right here locked up on this tight end right here and he just runs everywhere that he goes. Over on the other side, they've got <clears throat> what we call a bunch formation. You see this a lot in the NFL and what they do, especially when you're in man coverage, they're trying to get you to run into each other as defenders. And so, you know, they cross and do all kinds of crazy things and they're trying to, you know, trying to bump off uh, the defender so somebody comes free. So what the Seahawks do here is they align in a staggered position. So you got Richard Sherman up here real close up on the line of scrimmage. Uh, Jeremy Lane is back, the nickel, and he's back a little bit. He's got that guy. Sherm has that guy and then Deshaun Shedd sits back here and takes this guy and what they end up doing here is they run a little route here and, and go to the outside. This guy goes straight to the sidelines and then this guy just comes up the field. Well, Sherm bumps this guy and, and takes him and in the meantime uh, it gives Jeremy Lane enough time to get across here. He takes him and Shedd just sits back and waits for him. So they, they executed that perfectly. But what they ran on this was a screen play, and we'll get into that. But, uh, but first, uh, the, the two guys remaining who don't have coverage that I haven't, uh, haven't drawn yet are the two linebackers. So Bobby and KJ have the remaining running back. I don't think this is what they're doing on this play, but this is what we used to do, uh, green dog. And what that means, anytime a, uh, you use the term dog, that means it's a linebacker rushing the quarterback. And so these two guys have the remaining running back. So what what we used to call is green dog, so that means if he goes this way, uh, KJ would have him and Bobby would get to rush the quarterback. If he went the other way, Bobby would take him and KJ would get to rush the quarterback. So that's, that's green dog. Now, I think on this play what happens is KJ just is rushing the quarterback and, and Bobby has him man to man. What they do is they try to run a screen. So a screen play is where the uh, offensive lineman and even the running back will step back and block for a count. You know, the running back will step up and block and then they release. And then they release downfield and they're trying to set up something so that they can dump it over the defensive lineman's head. And uh, here's an unofficial term, pass rushing geniuses. This is a, uh, this is a sarcastic term that uh, old teammate of mine, Carl Mecklenburg used to use because defensive linemen who rush the quarterback and they don't recognize that it's a screen and so they think man I'm the greatest pass rusher ever well no you're not because the offensive lineman is actually letting you go and so he can get downfield and set up the screen now with that said uh, Ataba Rubin, big number 77, he almost gets to, to Cam Newton. But um, it's all about a timing thing. So these guys block for a little while, then come out and are trying to block somebody downfield. The running back, same thing. He'll block and then try to catch a little pass. And the quarterback, you know, steps back a little bit and then just dumps the ball over your head. And that's what a screen is. And then these guys are leading the way upfield for the running back. KJ truly is a screen master. This is what we uh, hear from his teammates. They call him the screen master. Saw him in Tampa Bay uh, a couple weeks ago. He blew up a screen for, for no gain. And uh, he just does a really good job with the timing and sensing that something's up, okay? Because they're trying to fool you on that. So he does a really good job of, of sniffing out this screen. So what happens is uh, he, he gets up and he actually doesn't make the play. And they, they dump the ball to the running back. Bobby Wagner uh, is able to get over there and make the tackle. But KJ, the way he read it and kind of disrupted things back here, he caused the timing to be off on the screen. So Bobby's able to come over and and make the tackle 
And the other thing was that he got pushed in the back on this play. So it was a, actually a penalty for Carolina. So it's one of those things where you kind of have to have a sense for it. KJ has a great sense for when they're trying to run a screen on him, and a, not a lot of guys do, but KJ is the best at that. And the reason why we're talking about KJ for Pro Bowl is that he had, um, he had a strip, he forced a fumble, he knocked down a pass with, he was covering man-to-man -man Greg Olson, just beautiful coverage. Didn't grab the guy, just put his hands on him, reached across, knocked the ball down. But also there was another play where they ran a reverse on him and he stayed home and caused uh, the play to not go for very much yardage. And then on this one, so even though he's not uh, registering a tackle or a sack or anything like that, he's allowing other guys to make plays. And K.J. Wright, I think, is, I think he's playing as good at linebacker as anybody in the NFL. So like I said, get out there and vote. KJ for Pro Bowl.